Why uh, always with the table? I gotta just get my pre-mystery tech stretch in. You have a floor. Ow, wow, that actually like, that hit me with some force. So if you're familiar with this little device called the Steam Deck, it promises to give a ton of performance and a switch-like form factor. Well, as a lot of people have pointed out, I and Neo have been doing something like that for even longer, and this is the new version, which is called the I and Neo Next? Yeah. That's a very- Is that right? Did I get it right? It's a very boring name. It's the next one! That was not as satisfying as I thought it was going to be. Explore the future. Oh, oh my God. Memorial nameplate. I and Neo next, Austin Evans. Can you see that? Ah, it's kind of cool. All right. Look, ah, I'm a sucker for things that have my name on them. The reveal is, oh, that looks like a switch. All right, let's go. Wow. Why? Why? <laughs> what do you hope to gain from smelling all these products? You ever been to a pay less shoe store? <laughs> Boy, oh my god, this stuff <laughs> Real talk though, first impressions. This all feels like it's metal. Well, this bottom is plastic, but I think the front is actual metal. We also have USB-C on top and on bottom. I like that the airflow is also out of your touch points too. Yep. It's like yep. in the middle and on the top. My concern with this, as is the Steam Deck, right? Uh, there's a lot of heft here. If you're used to using the Switch, or I even use the Switch Lite, you can play that pretty comfortably for a long period of time. This weighs more, right? It's just simply bigger, which means that you're gonna have a little bit more strain on your wrist because you have to hold it up. But that being said, this should have a lot more performance. So this is a Ryzen 7 5800U. Unlike the Steam Deck, which is using the newer style of AMD processor, it's a custom four core with RDNA graphics. This instead is using an eight core processor, but the older Vega graphics. Uh, we also have a two terabyte SSD inside. How much? is the Aya Neo Next. Because this is Indiegogo at the moment, or is this actually on sale yet? So the Neo Next is 1345 for the two terabyte. 1300 bucks, oh, that's a little bit more expensive than the Steam Deck. Now, they did say that this is not a complete final unit. So this is still early. I think that they're still going through the prototyping phase. So what I'm not gonna do is go through benchmarks and all that kind of stuff. Um, let's hop into a game of Forza. I mean, we're getting like mid 40s frames per second right now. So right now I am running at medium settings at 1280 by 800. I'm a big fan of the triggers because I believe the first I and Neo didn't have analog triggers, right? No, it just had uh, buttons essentially. Which that ain't it. Especially if you ever play any racing games, you want to have full analog triggers. To me, it's hard to justify spending over a thousand dollars on any kind of portable gaming PC when the Steam Deck is so close. The Steam Deck feels like it's really similar in a lot of ways and half the price. It's tough to justify. I just think saying, oh, you just have to get a Steam Deck is just not the exact comparison. Although they're in the same class, they're not the same product. This allows you to go up to two terabytes of storage. This is much smaller than the Steam Deck. It has a bigger battery than the Steam Deck. It's still gonna come eventually with the same specs as the Steam Deck. It's a more premium version of the same thing. Sure, you can go buy a Civic, but you can also go buy a Mercedes. I'm not saying that you shouldn't go buy a Steam Deck. Yeah. What I'm saying is- You think this is better? You should not discount this. And I would think if I had the money, I would rather have a smaller, more portable device that's more easy to put into a bag. What it sounds like is that we're gonna do a head-to-head -head comparison between the Aya Neo Next and the Steam Deck as soon as that comes out. Make sure you're subscribed, <laughs> ring a ling the ding a ling bell for Jared and I and our slugfest to determine what the best switch replacement is that's just by a switch actually. Mark it. <laughs> And I thought, I thought you were gonna fall for it. I thought I actually could grab it. Hello, friends. And welcome to the Razor Zephyr mask. Oh, I didn't even think you would think of me. Like, oh, I'm so excited. So, if you're not familiar with our friends over at Razor, they make some wacky stuff sometimes. We made an entire video on some of the goofy stuff that Razor makes. But this has gotta be top 10 weird things. This is a Bluetooth mask that has not only RGB, because Razer, it also has changeable filters, and it has, actually that's pretty much it, right? <laughs> oh, well, it's got a motor inside, so you're not just breathing in and out, you're being pure. You're circulating air. I have a way that we can test this that you may or may not approve of. Fart in my face. <laughs> that's how you get pink eye. <laughs> no. Oh, activate. 
It's a nice little hump. I gotta say, if this is actually how loud it is though, that's kind of loud. Put the bottom strap around my nape. What's my nape? Is this oh my God. The, the back of your neck? Oh wow, as I breathe, I can hear the fans like-, like I don't fighting. like that I can see your mouth. <laughs> No, 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 no. So when it comes to the Zephyr, I have a few different functions. So right now I'm on low fan speed. I can kind of do this, although honestly, I feel like I want it on high just because I need more airflow. Right, now I can change my internal lighting, right? So you see my mouth right now? So I'm gonna go blue. God, that's even worse. No, no, that's slightly better. Would you guys wear one of these? Nope. Nope, with a 10 foot pole. Not a, not a chance. I don't want people fo hyper focusing on my mouth. Those two LEDs next to it look really cool, mm -hmm. but when it lights your mouth, no. I personally don't think that being able to see my mouth is the most important thing for me, but I understand that for a lot of people you that actually is, is a major selling point. No, I figured it out. The the way that the, that the plastic is curved on it, Yeah. It magnifies the size of your mouth. I don't, no, 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 no. Uh, you uh, stop that. Is that why? This looks like logic, <laughs> an annoying orange. <laughs> <laughs> Activate Mystery Tech Ultimate Ears. Are these headphones? For your ears only. Follow these simple steps to find your perfect fit. So typically when it comes to doing these fully custom in-ear monitors, you have to actually go to a space, they need to measure your ears, and they essentially build a custom set of headphones that are exactly meant for you, right? This is what you see like artists when they're out there performing and stuff, you know they have that custom in-ear piece in. Ballers, essentially. So these are actually not too bad, 250. That's it? So just for context, these custom in-ear monitors typically will cost you, I mean, I think starting at 500 bucks, but they oftentimes will go up to and above a thousand dollars. I mean, they're very expensive. Cause think about it, you're not just buying a nice pair of earphones. You're buying something which has been completely custom molded to your ears. All right, so we're gonna take our case. We're gonna open it up, place our earbuds in, try them on, okay. You mold both sides at the same time. Okay, so we're basically, I'm gonna put them in my ears adjust them until they feel comfortable, okay? I mean, that pretty much immediately feels pretty good to me. So it's just playing a little bit of like a beat. So I just need to uh, like gently adjust them until I find it that sounds where it sounds the best. Oh, they're about to start getting warm and molding to my ears. Oh boy. Oh, it's getting warm, whoa. Okay, they're very warm right now, but it's happening. They're essentially curing the tips. Yo, this is very cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and put them back in the case now and install the uh, the software update. Battery life apparently is eight hours of earbud battery life. Okay. 20 hours with the case. Okay. 10 minutes of charge for 60 minutes of listening. That all sounds pretty solid. Eight hours is actually pretty good considering that most earbuds like AirPods and Galaxy Buds are usually a little close to like three to five, I think is probably the norm. There are a couple of concerning things as far as using these as like daily earbuds. The case is big, right? I'll try to fit it into my little pocket, but like this is always the test. Can a pair of earbuds live in your little coin pocket, right? Cause if it can't, I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna carry them all day, but I only have so many pockets and this is my earbud pocket. Ooh, that's that's chunky. I could carry these, that's borderline too big, but I think it might work. I'll immediately say, I think the left is a little bit of a better uh, fit than the right. I hear a little bit more bleed from the right, but let me actually do the test and see. It looks like your earbuds are fitting well. That's, uh, I said everything's okay and it's like, great, everything's good. The thing that I just kind of pause a little bit with these though, is the sound quality. They don't sound bad. I would put them in the same category as something like a pair of AirPods, but that's not a ringing endorsement, right? If you think about the statuses that we've taken a look at on a previous episode of Mystery Tech, excellent sound quality, and they have that really long battery life, admittedly in a chunky sort of case, but they're certainly not this expensive. If the fit is the most important thing you're looking for, then yeah, these are great. But the problem is, is that there are other headphones that are cheaper, that deliver similar sound quality and a whole lot more features, right? With active noise cancellation, with the transparency modes, with the ability to easily swap between devices. These really have one claim to fame. And while it's good, I don't know if it's $250 good when so many other great Bluetooth headphones exist. Hey Ken, I have a proposition for you. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna run this segment of Mystery Tech. 
Hello, it's me, Austin. Greetings, friends. Today, I'm going to share some of my favorite tech with the room. Except that I'm going to keep it all, but you guys just get to watch me open it. The tyranny is over. This right here is the analog pocket. Now, analog has made a number of different retro inspired devices over the years. In fact, back in like 2016 or something, we actually did a video on the analog, what was it, was the NES, whatever they called it, the NT or something? But the pocket is without a doubt the most ambitious console they've done yet. The analog pocket. Oh my God, I'm so, this thing is, mm, I'm gonna touch it for the first time. It's plastic, what? I definitely thought this was metal. Now if you've played a Game Boy or any kind of sort of more old school console that uses a 1989 LCD, you know that the screens are terrible, right? No backlighting. The thing with the analog pocket is that it has such a modern high resolution display that it can not only play the game, but you actually can get all like the little sub pixel detail and accurate color and whatnot. From what I've seen, this thing is next level. I'm gonna update the OS, but Analog were very kind to send over quite literally all of the accessories. The Game Gear adapter, so the nice thing is, this out of the box will work with Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance games. You can just drop them right in. But if you wanna play some other titles, including Game Gear games, you can add the little adapters and it will work for that as well. We also have the analog dock. So if all of this wasn't enough, you can hook this up via USB-C and then you are able to play your games in high quality on a TV, which is nice. Although, let's face it, I wanna play it on the actual display. The OS is incredibly simple. Nanoloop is the digital work station for GBA. I'm gonna make music. I'm making music first. Okay, I don't know how to make beats. We're just gonna move on. I'll leave that to Josh, okay? Josh knows what he's doing. Okay, let's start with our original Game Boy game. Oh my God, that looks great. Let's go, boys, let's go. Oh, no, get out of the way, Lewis. Blue flag, blue flag. The way that it emulates the Game Boy screen is incredible because you can see the individual pixels, but you also see like the lines that go around the pixels. Oh, that is sweet. All right, all right, all right, I get the idea. Let's actually play a game that's not terrible. Polaris Snowcross. Is this a 60 FPS game on a Game Boy? Holy crap. Well, that makes such a big difference to the responsiveness compared to like F1 Race, which is like five frames per second. We can use Game Gear, we can use a bunch of other things, but what I'm curious about is how it handles a Game Boy Advance game, which has not only a different resolution, but also it has a different aspect ratio. Yo! Wait, wait, wait. I can tell if I look super closely, it's not perfect scaling on the Game Boy Advance, but it's still very sharp. It also sounds great too. And the nice thing is, if you're done playing for a minute, Hit the button, it goes to sleep. You don't actually have to like restart your game or save or anything like that. Oh, you should always save your game. Now, at first I was a little bit turned off by the idea that it's plastic, because I thought like in all the images it looked metal, but the more I use it, it's a nice sturdy plastic. It's a little bit matte, but also it's a Game Boy. You kind of actually want it to be plastic, I think. The more I kind of use it, like the buttons don't have like some super high end feel. Like, they're not like really tactile or clicky or anything. Like they're still a little mushy, but they're mushy in the exact same way that a Game Boy was. In fact, I'd say they're actually slightly higher quality than the kind of buttons you got on a Game Boy. Jared, can you help me out here for a second? What's up? What are the ship times on this, on the website right now? Fulfillment Group C, 2023. 23? What are these Analog? going for on eBay? <laughs> I, I will uh, sell a sponsorship on this channel to um, formally ask for one of these ahead of 2023. I, I don't even know if I'll make it to 2023. You probably won't. This isn't the end of the segment. I got more items. Uh. We ain't done, son. This is not something that normally lands on Mystery Tech, right? But I received something in the mail that I just have to share. Can you see this little Pokeball on the letter? For Austin, from John P, age 10, please put in a Wish Tree Tech. Well, this is Mystery Tech, but how could I say no? You put a Pokeball on the front of it. Very excited. Thank you, John, for your kind contribution to this episode of Mystery Tech. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Look at this. All right, so we've got ourselves a note here. Dear Austin, first of all, I love your videos and your podcast. Shout out John. He listens to the, podcast. To the test drivers? She used a $138 MSI graphics card. Also, should I use 16 gigs of RAM? I hope you love what is in this envelope. Your best subscriber, John, age 10. P.S. Please feature me a video. Also, if Kim wants one of these envelopes, I can send him one. 
Oh, <laughs> never mind. I'm I'm all happy now. Uh, John, I would say that $130 MSI graphics card probably a good idea because it's hard to get your hands on graphics cards. I'd be a little curious on which MSI graphics card it is, and also 16 gigs of RAM is an excellent amount of RAM. So sounds like a plan to me. Let me see what you've made because this looks very cool. Whoa, John, John, did you just make? The Pokemon 11 card Surfing Pikachu pack. A custom pack of Pokemon cards. That apparently cost $30. I don't even want to open this. This is so good. Look, he's literally written everything in the back. You can even flip it up here. It says nine commons, one om common, one rare, and a promo. Ages five and up. Copyright 2021 by John. This is well thought out. John. Thank you, my friend. Oh, well, yo. It even opens like a regular pack of Pokemon cards. You can open it from the top and separate it. Yo, let's go. Oh, okay. Okay, oh, right. for, okay. for a second, I thought he drew all the cards. All right, let's see. Let's see what we got from the John Limited Edition pack of cards. Energy, we've got a Fletchling. Wow, this is old school. That's from Steam Siege. An Esper. Yo, John, these are like old school cards. I mean, these are like from 2017, 2018. Which is a Dragonair. Ooh. John, I appreciate the attention to detail that you also included a reverse. And our last card is, oh my goodness. Do you see that shine? That's a full art. Oh, it's a promo. It is a Eternatus V promo? John, that's sweet. Yo, thank you, my friend. All right, we gotta hook up John now. We gotta hook up John. That's, mm. That's, that's so thoughtful. 